guys, welcome back. This is the fifth part in the tutorial series on creating your first website from scratch. In the first uh, few parts, we've got everything set up and we're just ready to fill in the content. So in this part, we're going to finish up filling in the content in the main content area. And we probably will not finish it in this tutorial either. We'll get it. We'll finish it up in the next part. In this part, we're going to set up the thumbnail and the title and description. Okay, so first thing is I uh, removed the font styles from the header and I added them to the wrapper, the font family uh, and the font size. This is because this is going to be the default font for our website, but if we want to change the font for a specific div or a tag or a class, it's still really simple. You just go to the uh, tag, div, or class, or whatever, and define that within that style. Because the way that works is it's all about priority and order. And so with the wrapper being first, it's the first style defined. And then header comes next. Header is going to abide by these styles unless header has a style to replace one of these styles. So these styles can override any of these styles. That are you know that would affect the header anyway. So doing it this way, we have these these styles defined throughout the whole website. Except now we can come and define within our class that we want it to be a different size font or a different font type or family or color, anything like that. And you'll notice I did not define a color here, and I defined a color. Uh, let's see. At, for the anchor tag in the header, we defined it. That's that in the video when we did that. But all I did was remove the font family and the font size. And you'll look here, it's still the exact same. Okay, so what we're going to want to do here is I think I want to add a background to our main content area. So how we're going to do that is I think I want this to be... Hmm, let's see. Maybe we should go with a color for the background of the whole website. And then make this like a white or an off-white color. Okay, so let's uh, add a background color to our body tag. I'm going to go above our wrapper and we're going to say body background color. And then we're going to have to choose a hexadecimal based color. And to do that, we can go to uh, colorpicker.com. And you can just you know drag it around here and find the color you're looking for. And it will give you the hex code right there for you to put in. And there's a train outside right now. Hmm. And you can put that in and uh, that'll be the color for you. And it also allows you to save different color swatches here, which is what I've done for this example. I'm going to use this one as the uh, background color. I'm going to use this as the uh, body, or not the body, but the content background. And that as the border. I'm saying that now, but I may not do that. We'll see how that looks when we do it, though. So let's take that one for the background of the body. So we're going to use our hash key or the pound key, number sign, and paste it in there. Control S to open it up. It'll be hard to tell a difference because it was a really light color, but it's now just like a, a really, really light off-white color. And we want our uh, content background to be this color. I think we'll see. I don't really know. We'll just see how it looks. To do that, we'll come to our section. Background color. Boom. Control S, browser, refresh, and there we go. That's not too bad. I might be able to work with that. Okay, back to our color picker. I'm going to grab the part I'm going to use as the border, click that, control C to copy, come to the thingy majiggy, and now we're going to add a border around the content area. It's going to go around this uh, box here. To do that, we're going to say border, one pixel, uh, solid, and then we're going to use the color. Control S to save, browser, F5 to refresh, 
and there we go. And since we were working with exactly, exactly one pixel uh, perfect for our layout here, the extra two pixels on each side did not work well with each other. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to take this down to, I believe, 610 will work because I want to add a little bit of a margin to the right. I'm going to make the margins, okay, so we had two pixels that we added there, and we took off uh, ten pixels, so we have eight pixels to work with, so I'm going to say margin right, eight pixels. Control S, browser, refresh, and there we go. And now with the uh, section, I want to add a margin to the right, or sorry, to the top, of about, uh, we'll try eight pixels, make it even at first, but I may not go with that. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not enough. What I would like to do is uh, something similar to the way I did it here. So, I believe that's about 15 or 20 pixels there. I can't remember. So if I was to say, like, 15, that means that I added 7 pixels. So I'd have to take off. Well, I could, I could split it up between the section and the aside, but I'm going to take it all off of this. So I'm going to take 7 pixels off of this, of so 603. Control S, browser, re whoop, browser refresh. There we go. And then I'm going to say on the margin top, we will make it 15 pixels as well. And this doesn't look too cool like, it, like this, but what we could do is maybe make the header kind of like we did here. Uh, darker color. That way you have some contrast between the header and the uh, actually bo actual body of the website. But I don't know, that's completely up to you. I'm just showing you what you need to know to be able to do whatever it is you want to do with the design of your website. Or I mean, I could switch these colors around the background and make the uh, background the darker color. Let's do that and see how that looks. That may look a little bit better. So we'll take this background color and uh, control X. Go to this background color. We're going to paste it outside of it there. And then come on this one and control X. So then come down here and paste this one right here. Control V. Control S. Browser. F5 refresh. And there you go. That's not too bad. You can go with a little bit of a darker color for that. Let's go here. Or here. Let's go like. Uh, Maybe that. EV88. So we're going to come here. Control V. Control S. Browser. F5. And there we go. That's up to you though. I don't like that. So I'm just going to leave it at F2, F2, F2. Okay. And now we're going to use our first CSS3 style. I believe it's our first. Yeah, it's our first. I'm pretty sure. And this, we're going to uh, make these corners just slightly round. We can make it a circle if we wanted to, but we're going to make them just slightly round. I don't know why. It's just a very big thing in web design at the moment, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna follow along, I guess. So to do that, we're going to define a border radius. Now this can be applied to anything that's pretty much like a block element. And it does not need an actual defined border. You can just uh, use it if it doesn't have a border. So border radius. And now within the border radius, you can define all of the uh, corners for just with one uh, value. Or you can define them individually. Or I could say like border radius, top right, border radius, bottom right, things like that. But all of ours are going to be the exact same. And three pixels, maybe five pixels. Let's see here. Uh, let's go with five pixels. Thirty-five pixels. So let's browse refresh. There we go. That looks pretty good. And now we're ready to actually start filling in the content within this uh, within this container. It's about time, right? <laughs> All right. And we set up this index post, and that's going to be our stack of thumbnails. And we have it set up in here. What we're going to do 
Let's take these, control copy, enter down control V, and enter down control V. I believe we're going to go with three uh, rows on the main page. And there we go, we're done. No, we're, we're not done. We have a lot to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, set up our image. And to do that, we already brought in a couple images in this series, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Image, source, find the source, and the alt. And you just describe an alternative text to define the image. Our source is images slash thumbnail.jpg, I believe. And the alternative will just be thumbnail. Control S, browser, refresh. And there it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of a border around that, and then we're going to space the border off the image to give it like this little framed look. And that'll be pretty simple. Let me show you. Let's copy this. I know it's just an empty class at the moment. We will use it here in a second, but we're going to define an image for this class. And remember how to that style an image. Use the uh, name of the class or the tag or the div an ID, whatever it is, and then use the tag image after that. So for this we're going to say, okay, the class is index post, and then image. And now we can define the styles for the image within this class. And our image is going to float to the left because we want the text to be on the right side of the image. So for that to happen, the, uh, the image has to be on the left side of the text, obviously. We're going to add a border, one pixel, solid, and I think we can get away with using the same uh, colors we did up there. Control S, browser, oops, browser, refresh, and there we go. Now what we're going to do is add a padding. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a padding inside the border. So it's going to make the border come off of the image just a little bit probably about five pixels or so. So we're going to say padding is five pixels. Control S, browser, refresh, and there it is. Pretty simple, but it looks neat. Now we're going to add a margin to the right side of this image, and we're going to do that because, put that over there, we're going to do that because we want this to be off of the image. We don't want it to be snugged up against it. So we're going to say margin right, about 10 pixels. Refresh, and there we go. Now obviously these are not going to be up here. They're going to be stacked along with this. But to do that, we have to set it up properly. And we have yet to set it up properly. But we're getting there. And it'll look pretty good when we get done, I'm sure. So for the index post, what we'd want to do, I believe, is we should actually define a height for it so we don't ever have any stacking issues and so we can't ever go out of the out of the div and mess stuff up. So we're going to say height equals and I believe my image is 100 pixels but we have the 5 pixel padding so we'll say 110 to see if that works. Alright, looks like we're off by a little bit Maybe I got my image dimensions wrong. 120. There we go. That'll work just fine. So now we can come inside of this div that we have the image in. I'm going to enter down just to keep it organized. And under this we're going to say this is uh, the description of this post. Control S, browser, refresh. And there it is. What we can do is I, let's just make this the title. Title. Okay, so this is the title of the post. Now we're going to style it as a title. But we're not going to use uh, heading tags for this because they're not actually headings for the page it's on. This is actually a heading for the page it links to. So we're just going to make this a link. And then we can style the link inside of the, uh, the index post and make it look like a title. We've done this already a few times, not too difficult. Anchor tags wrap around it. href is the link. And we're going to just give it the uh, 
hash key thingy. And what that does is that it actually just links to the page it's on and it goes to the top of the page because it pretty much just refreshes the page. So control S, come here and now we have a link. And it is the default link, default blue link with the underline. Not like these because these have individual dis uh, defined styles within the uh, anchor tag for the header. But this one we have to do separately. So let's go ahead and do that now. Index post. Make sure you put the period there so it knows it's a class. Then we're going to put the anchor tag out from that and we're going to define the anchor tag. We're going to say under, or sorry, text decoration none. Color. Let's go with, uh, what color did we use for that? 777. They're going to say font size is 14 pixels, maybe. Refresh. And we have to uh, let's bold it. So, to do that, use a tag called font weight. And that just defines the thickness, or in this case, the weight of the font. And you, you can do it with uh, numerical values, which is what we'll do. And all fonts, all the uh, decently designed fonts, should have their own uh, attributes or their own thickness defined by this attribute. So we'll say font weight, if I can type weight, and then we define the weight of the font using a numerical value. And uh, it, it goes like, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400. And the higher you go, the thicker the font. But they usually only have uh, steps like 200 and 300 in most font families or in most font styles will be similar but uh, I believe ours will be bold at 600 let's try that control s refresh and there we go let's make it a little bit larger we're going to make it uh, 16 pixels I'm liking that let's make this look more like an actual title is the title of this post and no period will make it a little bit better. There we go. Then under that we're going to have the short summary for the post or a description or whatever it is. We could use a paragraph tag for this if you wanted to. We've not defined any styles for a paragraph yet, so it'll use the default. The default. It'll use the uh, default styles for that. This is the short summary for this post. Read this to understand what this post is all about. Control S, browser, refresh. And there you have it. We could have the title or the name of the author, whoever posted the article or whatever it is, and the date of the post. I don't think we're going to bother with that in this tutorial as that's pretty self-explanatory anyway. So I can't really see a reason to do that. If you wanted to do that, by now you have the knowledge to do so.